The most important thing is to arrive at Rome in pink, isn't it? Those were the words of Primoz Roglic after the first stage of the 2023 Giro d'Italia. After Remco Evenepoel made a stratospheric time trial, which placed the Slovenian more than 40 seconds in the classification, 19 days later, the ending would be very different. Do you want to know what happened during the Giro d'Italia 2023? Then follow my wheel and I'll tell you. Because of what happened on Monte Lusari, scene of the final battle, couldn't be more epic. By parts. A Giro that had many criticisms due to the route, with too many kilometers against the clock, as a great claim for the presence of the Belgian Evenepoel. But that hid among its stages mythical mountains, such as the iconic climb to Trequime di Labaredo, which previously had only appeared in the Giro eight times and where cyclists like Merckx, Gimondi, or Nibali left their name written as victors. Along with the Belgian great favorite, another name stood out at the finish line as a candidate for victory, the Slovenian Primoz Roglic. The jumbo rider was presented after a very irregular season due to injury, but a cyclist with his record is favored in any race. Other important riders were veteran Geron Thomas, Dal Hart, Portugal's Joao Almeida, and Alexander Vlasov. The big news of the first week was the abandonment of super favorite Remco Evenepoel, positive for COVID during the first rest day, after recovering the pink in the previous day's time trial. The great favoritism of the Belgian was subtracting spectacle, since the big favorites were reluctant to test the rider of quick step, as was demonstrated at the top of Campo Imperatore, first high finish where no favorite moved. Criticism appeared for the poor show, to which we have to add the cut suffered in the stage of Cras Montana, where whistles caused by the Tifosi were heard. Wasn't the best Giro d'Italia for fans. However, the unfortunate abandonment of the leader increased the chances of other cyclists and gave a point of excitement and uncertainty to the race, too boring until that moment. With all the excitement in its finale, the Giro d'Italia 2023 gave us an outcome as beautiful as it was exciting, with a penultimate stage that will enter the history of cycling. After a first two weeks marked by bad weather, a depleted peloton entered the decisive week of an atypical Giro, where the triumphs of cyclists in breakaway predominated and where the favorites had not yet poked their heads. Everything presaged a Thomas Roglic duel but everything was to be decided. In Monte Bondone, we could see the first big test for the aspirants, a stage won by Almeida where Roglic suffered and lost several seconds with respect to Thomas, who recovered the pink and gave a blow on the table proclaiming himself as the top favorite. Stage 18 in the heart of the Dolomites was presented as a very important test with five scoring mountains, three in the last 35 kilometers and a final in Val di Zoldo. The Italian champion, Filippo Zana, was the winner of the day, winning in the sprint to the French Thibaut and Pino, both survivors of the day's breakaway. In the peloton, the attempts of the jumbo team, which set the pace for Sepp Kuss and Roglic himself, were not enough to leave Thomas, who reached the finish line together with the Slovenian. The one who did lose time was Almeida, who practically said goodbye to the final victory. The last test of this Giro before the chrono climb was going to be the anti-penultimate stage, the Queen stage, with finish in Labaredo. Although it won't go down in cycling history as the day after, it was a heavily competitive stage, especially to enter the escape. Men like Buitrego threw themselves for heroics in Dolomitic lands. A curious fact, before the last ascents, Roglic decided to change his usual bike for another with a single plate. The favorites arrived together at the final climb after the pace of Ineox, and while Buitrago seemed to be the strongest in the lead on the way to his first victory behind Roglic, accelerated the pace testing Thomas. In some very hard ramps with 13%, Thomas and Almeida endured the test of the Slovenian. And while Buitrago won the stage, Thomas and Roglic, already within the last kilometer, were measured in a spectacular duel favorable to the cyclists of the jumbo team, 
but showed the equality of forces between them. The Giro would be decided the following day in the chrono climb to Monte Lusari. The difference between them was 26 seconds in favor of Thomas. An exciting finale awaited us, which, as you'll see, was full of emotion and epic. The route of the chrono climbing had two distinct parts. The first, with more than 11 kilometers, mostly flat, although with several steep slopes. The second, the terrible and unprecedented ascent to Monte Lusari, with more than 7 kilometers at 12.1% average and ramps of 22%. If we add a concrete pavement where the bicycle lacks as much traction as on the asphalt, the demand is beastly. We were facing an epic denouement. The first reference time was set by the youngest of the race, Matthew Ricitello, who stopped the clock at 46.19. Before the departure of the Capos, Brandon McNulty was the first rider who lowered the barrier of 46 minutes, 45 minutes and 30 seconds, and that made him spend many minutes in the famous hot chair. Once all the favorites were in the race, Roglic had been improving the times in the first intermediate points, which made him recover 16 of the 26 seconds, with which he started at a disadvantage in relation to Thomas. However, misfortune, which on countless occasions has been his shadow, reappeared in Primoz's path. With about three kilometers of ascent ahead, Roglic had a breakdown in the transmission, an invention that could be very expensive. And that's where the Slovenian decided to ride a single plate on his bike, something he had tried the day before, which allowed him a great advantage to save muscle at high cadences on the steepest slopes. But in a bump, its mechanics and illusions seemed to jump through the air. There was no choice but to grit his teeth and perform a heroic. And here, at this moment, the Slovenian amazed us with all his greatness. After losing all the advantage he had gained, Roglic was able to overtake the Welshman by 40 seconds and wear pink by 14, the fourth smallest gap in the history of the Giro. Seeing is believing. Roglic, who melted into an embrace with his companions, cried with emotion. A time trial, the same specialty that made him lose the Tour de France, gave him the victory in the Giro d'Italia possibly the best of his career. No one could imagine a better ending for a well-deserved Primoz Roglic. Now, he is a living legend of cycling. If you want to continue enjoying stories of the best cyclists in history, don't miss this.